In this video, we're going to take a look at how to add custom attributes in Solaris for Luke Devin in Katana. To be more specific, we're going to use Houdini's scattering tools to create the layout or set tracing of a shot using multiple assets. Then we're going to export as USD all the information from Solaris to Katana. And once in Katana, we will use the custom attributes exported from Houdini to look at the scattered assets very easily. In this video, I'm going to be using dummy geometry just to demonstrate the technique in the most simple and efficient way. But everything shown here will be done more in depth in one of my upcoming videos about Houdini Solaris and Katana interoperability. I will leave all the appropriate links in the description. So here I have a very simple scene that I want to use as a sample. We're going to go uh, way deeper into this uh, technique and other similar to this one in one of my uh, videos that I'm recording for my Patreon channel. Uh, but again, this is just a simplified scene so you can actually see this technique very clearly. The goal here is to take a bunch of USD assets like this big head, this rubber toy and this squab. I wanna, I'm going to publish these as USD assets and then use them in a scattering system here inside of Solaris, kind of like this, right? So imagine that you are dressing an environment and instead of these dummy toys, you have houses or buildings or trees or whatever you might think of that you can scatter to create an environment. That's usually what you do, right? You get assets, you make them, you model them, you look them, uh, you do the look dev, then uh, everything gets published into USD files, and then you use them in a, in a scattering system. That is kind of the goal. Then, because these are background assets, I mean, this technique doesn't apply to hero assets. I mean, you could use this with hero assets if you wanted to, but we have other ways of dealing with hero assets in a scattering system. And that is something that I'm going to cover in that video that I was mentioning before. This is more suited for background assets. Imagine these are trees or plants and you want to scatter thousands of them, um, but because they are, no, they are not hero assets, you don't really care that much about how they look in a look they've seen. You only care about how they look in the context of a shot. If that is the case, you don't want to really lose a lot of time doing the look depth. You just want to put them in the shot with the rest of the elements, the rest of the animation, atmospherics, the rest of the assets and whatnot, and then just do the look depth in the shot. Um, so, the goal here is to use these three USD published assets, take them into this scattering system, publish this as a USD layer for Katana, and then do the look dev in Katana at the same time that you are lighting the shot, or you know, at least when you are assembling the shot. So the first thing you have to do here is to actually publish the USD assets. Um, and as you can see here, I'm just using the component builder. You know already about that, right? The component builder is basically a very simple template that uh, SideFX provides to create USD assets. And it works very well. If, if you've seen some of my previous videos about USD, you know that I created my own template that offers a little bit more customization, but in this case, we don't really need it. And unless you work in a big production, most likely you don't need to create your own templates unless you have very specific requirements. Anyway, here we have the geometry, here we have the materials. In our case, we don't have materials because we want to create the materials in Katana. And here we have the component material, uh, which basically assigns materials to geometry. And finally, you have this component output where you can do, do, uh, you can do a bunch of things, but the only one that we actually want to do is to publish a USD layer. That's it. The only thing that I've done here, and this is important, I just added an attribute wrangler to my geometry that is running over primitives, 
but actually it doesn't really matter for this purpose. It can run over primitives or points. It will work either way. And what I'm doing here, I'm creating a string attribute that I call material assignment. Okay. All the assets that I'm publishing uh, in this video have the same string attribute, again, called material assignment. And then each of the assets has a different value. So in this case, this asset, this big head, has an attribute value called red. If I go to my rubber toy, this one has the same string attribute called material assignment, but the value is called green. And finally, my squab, same thing, has an attribute called material assignment with a value called blue. So again, imagine that these three, instead of being dummy assets, they are different families of trees. And then you want to create the look dev of those trees in Katana, and you want to select thousands of each variation of those trees automatically in Katana. Well, there are multiple ways of doing that, but in my opinion, the best or maybe the easiest is this one, just by creating an attribute that defines what type of family those trees are, or in this case, what type of color these assets should have later in Katana. Okay, so these are all published. And if I just create an asset reference, just, just want to check that uh, everything's working. So here I have a big head, rubber toy, and squab. So if I go to my rubber toy, I can just select my rubber toy USD. And as you can see, it is here. So it is just working fine. Okay, cool. Then for scattering, again, this is just a sample scene. So there is nothing complex here. It's just a bunch of them. I just created a layout node. And then I have these uh, three thumbnails here that you can actually create from your uh, component output. So I'm just using these three guys. Then I'm using an instancer node. And the, in the instancer node, I'm basically scattering a bunch of them. In order to create the scattering system, you need to dive inside of the instancer, create a geometry support. In my case, it's a grid. Then I have a scatter and line node that I'm using for basically controlling the coverage or how many assets I want to scatter. Then you can control things like the radius. You can export different attributes like P scale and orientation, and you can play with orientation as well. I mean, you all probably already know about this. I have plenty of videos where uh, I explain uh, scattering in uh, depth. So. Let's not waste any more time here. Uh, basically, this is just a regular scattering system in Houdini. There is no customization at all here, just out of the box tools. The only thing that I've done is creating this index attribute here, which is an integer uh, value. And once the index value is created, then I add an attribute randomize where I'm randomizing that index attribute that we created before. I'm setting the distribution uh, to custom discrete, and then I'm adding all the assets here. So I only have three assets, so I only need three entries here. Zero would be the first asset, one the second, and two the third. And then I have weights here, right? So if I set these two assets to zero, I'm only using the first asset, then I can start introducing a little bit of the second asset and maybe a little bit more of the third one. Or if I just type one in all of them, all of them would be used equally in this scattering system. As simple as that. Next, I just have a USD ROP where I'm exporting the USD layer called instance test version one. And in this reference node, I'm basically importing that well, you, you see that it has changed just because I've been playing with the values here live with you, right? So of course it has changed. This is just the version that I exported before. So this is working, right? Um, before USD was available in both Houdini and Katana, getting point clouds from Houdini into Katana wasn't that simple, especially if we're talking about complex scattering systems. 
Something like this would have been a little bit easier, but if you have something more complex, something that you would do in a visual effects shot for uh, environment creation, let's say, for set dressing or for layout or for um, just populating a, an environment, it was actually quite difficult. Uh, it didn't, you didn't have a solution out of the box. You had to create your own tools. Now with USD, it's way easier. And again, this is just a dummy scene, something very simplistic. But in the video that I'm recording for my Patreon uh, channel, I'm going to explain all of this um, in much more detail using um, something a little bit more complex uh, and something that could mimic um, maybe a visual effect shot. Not that complex because I don't really have the time to do something that complex at home but you get the idea. Okay, so this layer uh, has been exported. So let's go uh, into Katana and let's have a look at that. Okay, so here we are in Katana now. There are multiple ways of bringing USD layers into Katana. And also it depends on the render engine that you're using. In my case, I'm using Arnold. So there are a couple of different ways, but let's stick to, to one of them for now. Here I have a minimalistic uh, template in Katana, nothing um, um, very specific. Of course, um, in other videos, um, I can show you how to create like a proper look dev template or lighting template or a scene assembly template. It depends on the type of task that you're doing. You might have a simple template or a more complicated template. In my case, or in this specific case, it's extremely simplistic because that's the nature of the scene that we're working with. Anyway, um, I just created a camera here um, and then I'm using this USD node where I can import the same USD layer that I exported from Solaris. So if we take a look at this merge, we can actually look through the camera we don't see anything, that's because um, our scene here is collapsed. So we can do, um, we can go to geometry, now we can see the bonding box, and you know, this is not very heavy, so we can basically just expand everything. We're not using proxies or, or anything like that. That is actually a very nice feature that, you know, with USC you can have, um, you can have different purposes for geometry. So you can have render geometry, you can have proxy geometry, and it gets automatically updated based on uh, if you're looking at the final render or if you're looking at the Hydra viewport. But here we have this, um, this scene, which is exactly the same that we had there, right? Okay, cool. So if we render this, it is going to work. Right, it is going to work in the sense of that the geometry is going to be drawn, it's going to be rendered, but we don't have any materials because we didn't publish any materials from Solaris. We just published the geometry. These are three assets, and then we're instancing these assets in the point cloud that we generated using this instancer. So that is working. Um, but again, imagine that these are just different family families of trees. And we want to look them, uh, look. We want to look, do the look dev of these trees at the same time that we are working on the assembly of the scene, or we are lighting the shot. Well, how do you select all the trees that belong to a family so you can assign a shader to those? And how do you select all the other trees that belongs to different to all the other different families to assign different materials to those. Well, that's when these attributes that we created before come in handy, right? Because we have an attribute called red, blue and green. So it's very easy to uh, point to that attribute in Katana. If I select any of these uh, geometries, like the rubber toy, for example, if I go to attributes, we can see that under geometry, we have this section called arbitrary, and then we have something called material assignment, which is exactly the attribute that we created here. It's called material assignment with a value of red in the case of the pig head. I think the rubber toy, it's gray. So if I go to material assignment, I can see that I'm running that attribute over points. 
that the type is a string. Yes, that's all correct. And the value in this case is green. And we have a green value for every single point of that asset. Great. So the question now is how do we create a collection in Katana with all the assets that have an attribute called green or a family, a specific family of a tree or a color for a car or a building? Well, we do that by creating a collection, right? So um, by the way, here I have a gaffer three with an environment light. And here I have uh, four different materials, gray that is not being used, but it, you know, you always need a gray shader in your scene. Then we have a blue, green and red materials. And each of them, of course, has the corresponding color. So in the collection create, I'm just creating a collection in root. So up here, this one is called collection red. And I have a custom cell that is looking into anything under root that has an attribute. This is the syntax that you need to type that has an attribute under geometry, arbitrary material assignment value that equals red. And this is the path or the location of the attribute that we just saw here, geometry, arbitrary, material assignment, value, green. Okay, so just take a look at that. You can copy that expression because you're going to be using these quite a lot. Then I have another collection for green and finally another collection for blue. And finally, the only thing you have to do is create your material assigned nodes where you add whatever collection, in this case collection red, and I'm assigning the red material. Here I'm doing the same with collection green and finally with uh, connection blue, collection blue, sorry. I'm going to enable um, live rendering and I'm going to live render this. I'm just going to take a look at the log just in case that I have any issues here. Okay, cool. So this is working as you can see here. So now every single asset that has a material assignment um, value called green, blue or red is getting that specific shader. So it's very easy for me to do the look there of all of these assets that have been published as USD geometry, then instance in a USD layer uh, using point clouds in Houdini. Uh, now I can just easily do the look dev here in context. And again, if these were trees and I would have like plants and rocks and buildings and cars and everything, I can just do the look dev in context because these are not here assets. These are just background assets that are going to be very far away. So no one really cares that much about having a very specific look dev. I just can do this here. Of course, this is not the only way that you can bring instances or scattering systems from Solaris into, into Katana. I mean, you can actually bring both the geometry, the point cloud and the look dev. And we're going to see that in the video that I'm recording for my Patreon uh, channel. And of course, this is all live rendering. So you can just go to the green shader and just, you know, change these to purple or whatever and I will be uh, just modifying the look dev in context. Okay, so hopefully you found these uh, interesting. This is a very common technique and um, in visual effects, especially when building environments. So we're going to go way deeper <clears throat> into this technique and others similar to work between Solaris and Katana. I hope you learned something new today. And remember that all this information will be covered in depth in one of my upcoming videos on my Patreon. Check the link in the description and please consider subscribing to my Patreon so I can keep making professional visual effects training. Thank you.